Okay, in this video, I'm going to share with you the results of my 1970 Stratomatic tournament final between my NL champion, the 1976 Cincinnati Reds, and my AL champion, the 1979 Baltimore Orioles. Just to give you a quick recap, uh, 76 Reds got here by beating the 1974 Dodgers and then the 1979 Pirates in the final. And the 1979 Orioles get here by defeating the 1970 Twins in the first round in a best of three. Then they turned around and they sweep the 1970 Baltimore Orioles, who are the number one seed in the American League. And then they win the American League final by defeating the 1978 Yankees in five games. Now, just one quick thing. Um, I misspoke at the end of my last video where I had said that the Oriole rotation was pretty much beat up coming into the series. I'd forgotten that I actually give teams two days off going into this final round. With that being said, uh, you may remember in my AL final, Flanagan and Palmer pitched games four and five respectively on three days rest. Um, but with the two days off going into this final round, that means that the game three starter from the LCS, Dennis Martinez, he's pitching on full rest going into game one. So the way I have things lined up for the 79 Orioles is games one, two, three. I'm going to go DeMart, Flanagan, and Palmer, and then I'll make a decision on game four, what to do right there. So let's get into the results here. Um, 1976 Reds, higher seed. So they have the home field. Uh, in game number one, we've got Dennis Martinez going up against Don Gullett. And you're going to see the 1976 Reds take this one by a score of four to three. This game was a real heartbreaker for the 79 O's. As you can see, they had a three nothing lead going into the bottom half of the eighth inning. And I bring in Tippy Martinez. Um, he comes in and he gives up a home run to Cesar Geronimo. Now, Geronimo is a guy, and this is another one of those examples that comes up in Stratomatic sometimes. Geronimo has W power against left-handed pitching, but he does have a small home run split versus lefties. It just happened to come up for him in that at bat. So he leads off the bottom of the eighth with home run. Then we get a single by pinch hitter, Bob Bailey, and then a Pete Rose walk. Now Pete Rose would later come around to score the tying run on a pass ball. And then go ahead run scored by Ken Griffey was driven in by Dave Concepcion. So you see the 76 Reds get four runs in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Just a terrible loss for the 79 Orioles. Again, they had a three nothing lead going into the bottom of the eighth. See Geronimo had a nice day as he goes three for four with a home run and a ribby. And and you get four really solid outings out of the 76 Reds bullpen as Bourbon gets the win as he allows one run in three innings and Eastwick gets the save. So the 76 Reds get the first game. Now going on to game number two now, we've got the Orioles ace Mike Flanagan going up against Pat Zachary. And you could see the 76 Reds take this one by a score of three to one through two games in this series. The 79 Orioles have done two things, which you absolutely cannot do if you want to beat the 1976 Reds. Number one, in the first game, you had the bullpen blow a three nothing lead. And then in the second game, as you could see off here to the right, 79 Orioles left 12 guys on base. You're not going to beat the 1976 Reds one to nothing. Okay. So uh, if you get guys on, you need to do everything you can to get them in. So through two games, the 1976 Reds have a 2 0 series lead. Again, nice outing by the Reds bullpen as. You get four scoreless innings out of them. Bourbon gets his second win of the series as he goes two innings, and then Eastwick gets the save. So the series shifts back to Baltimore now for games three, four, and if necessary, game number five. Now, as the series goes back to Baltimore, bring back the DH. So the Oriole lineup is extended a little bit as now you're able to insert the everyday DH Lee May. And for the 76 Reds uh, with Palmer, the righty on the mound, I insert Dan Dreesen into the DH slot, batting seventh. And in game number three, we've got Gary Nolan going up against Jim Palmer. Now let's take a look at what happened in game number three. And you could see the 76 Reds take this one in extra innings by a score of five to four. Um, this is the second time in the series where the Orioles went into the 
late innings with a lead. You could see they had a 4-3 lead going into the top half of the seventh. As in the bottom of the sixth, uh, Rick Dempsey hits a two-out, three-run home run. But again, the Oriole bullpen couldn't hold it. And then in the top half of the 11th inning, when the Reds took the lead, that inning, Geronimo leads off with a leadoff double, and then he's bunted to third by Pete Rose. And then after Stoddard strikes out Joe Morgan, um, I'm looking at Ken Griffey coming up with Johnny Bench up after him. And I did kind of think about walking Ken Griffey here and pitching to Johnny Bench just because of the fact that Griffey just has more hits on his card, where Johnny Bench obviously has a lot more power, but there's some walks on his card, so I know a walk wouldn't really kill me there. But I decided to pitch to Griffey. Uh, He comes through with a ribby triple. The only thing that made me feel better about not walking Griffey was that what I rolled on Griffey's card would have been a home run double rest of the way on Johnny Bench, so it turns out it wouldn't have mattered. The 76 Reds take a 5-4 lead to the bottom half of the 11th inning. And again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but outstanding performance by the Reds bullpen. Uh, They get four scoreless innings. You get Manny Sarmiento coming out of the pen and throwing three scoreless innings to get the win. And Raleigh Eastwick retires the Orioles in order in the bottom half of the 11th inning for the save. Uh, Tim Stoddard gets the loss. So the 1976 Reds through three games have a 3-0 series lead on the 79 Orioles. And as we move on to game number four, I've got no other choice for the 79 Orioles but to bring back Dennis Martinez on three days rest. And for the 1976 Reds, we have Fred Norman on the mound. I decide to change up the Oriole lineup a little bit um, going into this game. Basically, the move was to put Bummery on the bench and insert Benny Ayala into left field, substituting the defense, of course, because I'm just looking to get the Oriole bats going a little bit and hopefully get ahead, get a lead and make my defensive switches later on in the game as I'm trying to change the momentum here. So as we take a look at what happens in game number four, you could see nothing really worked out as the 1976 Reds win this one easily by a score of eight to one as they complete the sweep. Norman absolutely terrific game as he goes seven scoreless innings. Um, And even with the score five, nothing going into the bottom half of the eighth inning, I just didn't want to take any chances and let the Orioles back into the game. So I go Eastwick two innings to just um, close it out. This game four performance by the 76 Reds. This was one of the games that I was kind of waiting for them to have, because if you go back and look at the National League tournament, and specifically you look at the games that I played with the 76 Reds leading up to this series and this particular game, it almost seemed like there were a number of games where there were some innings with the 76 Reds where it would be like out, out, home run, strikeout. You know, innings like that, where, yeah, even though, we all know how much power the 1976 Reds had in their lineup. This game four that you see right here, this is more like what the 76 Reds are capable of doing. You could see they just constantly put guys on base and they could beat you in so many different areas of their lineup as if you look at the five six guys in the order tony perez in this game goes two for four with a walk and three runs scored george foster the number six hitter goes three for five with a home run rbi and three runs scored and oh by the way the number nine hitter cesar geronimo he drives in three runs in the game batting ninth so this is the game that um i basically knew was just waiting and eventually it was coming for the 1976 Reds, which is why I kind of knew not necessarily after just game one, but especially after game two, the way the Orioles lost those two games, I kind of had a feeling that this series was not going in the direction that I wanted it to go because I just wanted to see a nice series, maybe go at least six, even better if it would have gone seven, just to make it more exciting and to put a bow on what was a tournament, which was a lot of fun playing. Uh, It's always fun playing these tournaments with these great teams, but the way the Orioles lost the first two games, it just didn't turn out the way that I had hoped. Um, And the Reds take game four uh, very easily by a score of eight to one. You can see Dennis Martinez get the loss as he goes up three runs in four and a third innings. So the 1976 Reds win my 1970s Strat tournament. And just to break down the Reds' performance in this four-game sweep 
of the 1979 Orioles here. First, let me focus on what the 76 Red starters did in these four games. You could see um, in the four games, the starting pitchers go 24 innings and only allow three earned runs. The Reds' bullpen, 14 innings pitched, one earned run. The runs scored through the first three games, it was a very competitive series. I'm not saying this was an easy sweep by the Cincinnati Reds. Not at all. It wasn't until game four. Obviously, game four got out of hand. But the problem was that the Orioles were doing things that you don't want to do, things that you can't do if you want to beat the 1976 Reds. Specifically, if I was to break down the Orioles' pen performance in this series, the 1979 Orioles' bullpen, 13 and two-thirds innings pitched, 12 earned runs. And that is not what you want when you play the uh, 1976 Reds. One other thing that I would say about the 1976 Reds, and this kind of goes to whenever you do a solo playthrough. Um, I know the preferred way of playing Stratomatic is to get people together and do like a tournament, spend a day playing games and stuff. That That is definitely the, the best way to play. But if you are sitting down, you know, just to kind of, practice and just try things out playing the 1976 reds when you're doing a solo playthrough they're in my opinion they are probably one of the best teams to play against because the 1976 reds are probably the most self-contained team i've ever come across in stratomatic meaning it's a team that you really don't have to manage for and i know sometimes the reason why people don't like doing solo playthroughs is that they don't want to have to manage for two teams. They like keeping the element of surprise and doing something outside the norm, think outside the box to try to trip up the opposing manager. But the reason why the 76 Reds are a good team to play against in a solo playthrough, like I said, you don't have to do a lot of managing for them. You're not going to alter the lineup and the bullpen is very easy to sim- to figure out. It's Sarmiento and Eastwick. Um, And you do have other good arms in that bullpen, but if you have a lead or if you're tied late in the game, you're handing the ball off to Sarmiano and Eastwick. Those are your two big guns out of the bullpen. That's one thing to keep in mind with the 1976 Reds. This is a very good team to um, play against when you're doing uh, solo playthroughs. So those are my results on my 1970s Stratomatic Tournament Final. Once again, the 1976 Reds sweep the 1979 Baltimore Orioles in four straight. Once again, I thank you all for watching. It is greatly appreciated, and I will talk to you all down the road.